welcome to The Ref Show. A bit of a farewell show, actually, in many respects. It's our final one of the season, coinciding with the end of the league season in the Premier League. And, of course, we've got the playoffs. We'll talk about all those games from over the weekend. Um, it's a farewell show in terms of, well, it's no longer ULRF, but it's a brand new uh, title for the website, The Ref Online. Do follow us before. It's pretty much same old, same old, isn't it, David Hurst? Same old faces as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just for you. New face, relatively new, yeah. and Paul Roger joining us on the panel. Welcome, Paul. And But some farewells to a couple of characters over the weekend. Arsene Wenger, a final farewell. And John Motson as well, esteemed mm -hmm. commentator for so many years, has done his final match of the day commentary. And a couple of referees, well known to you uh, on this show, are retiring. We'll talk about them as well. Not so many major issues in the Premier League on the final day, were there, Paul, really? No, not really. Um, it's always nice to have a nail-biting finish on the final day. Um, but no, I think most of the issues were sorted before it started. It was just the the major one was uh, European or Champions League qualification, David, wasn't it? Yeah, Liverpool-Chelsea fighting that one out, yeah. uh, Liverpool winning that race. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say nail-biting. Uh, two teams, I mean, obviously Chelsea getting beat as well. Yeah. Uh, but Liverpool was, was so much in command yesterday that uh, it was always theirs for the taking. Could have been any number, couldn't it? It was pretty yeah. emphatic, as yeah. you say. Liverpool 4, Brighton 0, Newcastle 3, Chelsea 0. Uh, yeah. You know... So uh, pretty clear cut, Liverpool qualify. Kevin Fren was in charge of that. Zero cards, no mm. yellow, nothing. No, no flash of colour other than the goals and the near misses. Mo Salah? Yeah, yeah, Mo Salah, what a season. Yeah, you know. broken the Premier League uh, goal scoring record, 32 goals. Yeah, yeah, Incredible. yeah. Big good race with uh, Harry Kane. Harry obviously missed a bit of a bit of the season with injury. Uh, but no, I mean, Salah, everything is it. This season's flown in. Uh, and well done to him, to be fair. And uh, Harry got a couple of goals as well in a 5-4 thriller at White Hart Lane. I'm just giggling because yeah. every time you switch to the Twitter and Facebook, or Harry's won something, <laughs> whether yeah. in the Grand National <laughs> Univision Song Contest this <laughs> yeah. weekend. But yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he's scoring goals as, as regular as anybody. Uh, hopefully he takes that into the, into the summer with him. Yeah, Harry Kane, butt of jokes, but they're, they're, they're friendly, really. I mean, one or two people around the edges of this have got offended on his behalf. Uh, because he claimed a goal and he got a touch off his shoulder or whatever. <laughs> Don't and get me people started. People are getting <laughs> offended for him. But it's just great humour when, yeah. when his, his head was transposed on the winning horse in the this Grand National. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's won everything this year, exactly. He's, yeah. he's got Wimbledon to go as well. Yeah. But, but what David just said about the, uh, the World Cup, Mm. It's, it's, it's great. And if you look at the game yesterday with Jamie Vardy as well, they both look in form. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think it gives us a bit of encouragement. It certainly does, yeah. Can uh, I just say we always have this encouragement at this <laughs> stage of the competition. We do. <laughs> yeah. We never uh, quite get over the next yeah. line, though. It's the hope that kills you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but really we all is. live with hope. <laughs> all right, Martin Atkinson was in charge uh, at St James's Park. There was only one card in that game. And... As the anorak that I am, I counted the number of uh, yellows. No, there were no reds, but I counted the number of yellows in the Premier League on the final day. Uh, only 22 across the 10 games, which is a very low figure, average 2.2, which kind of tells you that it was a, a friendly final day with not a lot on the line. Actually. Yeah, and you, you say that an average mid-season game would be around... Three to four, three I would say, four, per yeah, match. So. Yeah. Certainly, uh, like you say, everybody kicking each other with flip-flops on, I think, this yeah. weekend. <laughs> well put. <laughs> but, well put. But not much at stake, but you could also say the referees managing the games very well. Absolutely. Well. And also the players behaving, which yes. is what we want to see. So Very yeah. well turned into a positive there, Paul. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's the end of the train spotting. Um, Swansea and Stoke City relegated, along with West Brom. I'm looking at you when I say West Brom, because I know where your allegiances lie. Yes. Yeah, but we knew about that anyway. Yeah, um, we did. Yeah. So we, we knew what we were going into. Uh, it was a shame it didn't go into the final day of the season. but It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It did for Swansea. Went yes, it did. the final day, but it was pretty, un pretty unreachable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they got out of it for so long. Carlos Cavalion had a great start. Everybody hailed him as some kind of genius. Yeah, and yeah. The, the truth is always somewhere in between, isn't it? He yeah, ends the I season mean, as a, under a cloud. Yeah, I mean, he started out a little bit like he did at Sheffield Wednesday, you know, going, yeah. getting results, and, and then towards the end at Sheffield Wednesday, the end at Swansea, uh, sort of went on that 
not actually pushing for the win, yeah. stopping the stopping the l- defeat, really. There were a couple uh, of games, were they? Bournemouth, it, yeah. Bournemouth and Southampton, where you thought they had to really go out and yeah. win. I mean, and they, when you're down the bottom, you've got to go and get results. You, mm. you can't rely on not getting beat. You've got to go and get well, results. You know him better than I do because of him being at Wednesday. I don't know him. But going up to the final few games and I saw his interviews, I thought he was really arrogant. Yeah. I know he was saying, well, it's in our hands. We've got three easy games, more or less, at home. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. we'll, it's OK. And, and I'm thinking, that's arrogant. And, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at the time, if you're that complacent and you're, you're that confident, hang on a little bit. It could. It might not as be as easy as, th- as you think. I, yeah. I think that. that co- I think that caught up with him. Looking yeah. at the other side of the coin, that might have been his psycho- psychology with the players mm-hmm. to give them confidence that yes, we can do it. I don't know, but it's it's a strange one how somebody can start off as a genius and end as a clown in the popular <coughs> perception. Yeah. In my view, the truth is always some, some, somewhere in between when yeah, you judge yeah, a manager. Yeah. Um, Anthony Taylor was in charge of that game. Um, there wasn't an awful lot to criticise referees for over the weekend, yeah. but in that game, I think there should have been a penalty. Uh, Paul, should there? Um, the, the, Swansea Stoke. It was the, yeah, that was the handball. Um, it, I think he gave it. He, he gave the he gave the penalty. He gave the, the penalty. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a little bit of a reaction, late reaction, and I think the assistant referee uh, got it because the assistant yeah. referee was in a good position to see it. It was on Anthony's blind side, right? And so it was a delayed reaction, and right. uh, the, the assistant referee didn't raise his flag. Which is which is which is fine by me because if he raises his flag, he's more or less pointing a referee in a position mm. where he's got to give it. But by not raising his flag and telling him, then I think um, that right. was the best mm. best thing to do, and it was a correct decision. Um, right. It was one of them as well. You can argue all day long whether he's deliberate and ball or not. Yeah. But I can understand the decision. Mm-hmm. Right. Southampton survive under Mark Hughes. Uh, well done to him. Uh, they lost on the final day to Manchester City right at the end, one uh, nil. Nicked it there. 100 points. Uh, Andre yeah. Mariner was in charge of this one on the South Coast. 100 points. I think it's the first time any team in the top flight has ever done that. And people have looked back to see whether it, you know, under the old yeah, two points yeah. for a win, that could have converted to 100 and apparently not. So, Yeah, a fantastic achievement. I mean, mm. I mean they won the, won the league comfortably. Yeah. Uh, and never took their foot off the gas. Like you say, the last game of the season, nothing at stake other than going for extra points. Uh, and got, went out there and got them. Yeah, well done to Manchester City. And did you see how they celebrated as well? They celebrated oh. as though they won the league all over again. It was yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. It was obviously a big, big target, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. That yeah. meant a lot. Yeah. I mean, the manager was off, and you know, yeah. um, Pep Guardiola, what a man! What a it man. just goes to show what, what it means to the players, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and how Pep gets them wound up to to achieve the targets that he's setting. I'm sure he sat there saying, you know, okay, we've won the league. This is the next target. Then yeah. we move on to the next target yeah. after that. But let's get this under his belt, and and it looked like that's what they were what they were actually doing. Yeah, very professional. Keep going to the end, yeah. right to the very end. Uh, and I'm really pleased. I've got to say, uh, some sentiment. There is some sentimentality in football. So please, and this is no disrespect to Huddersfield, who already had that fantastic achievement of staying in the Premier League. Arsenal winning one nil in the final match under Arsene Wenger. I mean. 1-0 doesn't actually do him justice in terms of it used to be 1-0 to the Arsenal, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, in the more functional yeah, yeah. George Graham era. Yeah, yeah. And this has been anything but functional, the football under Arsene, has it really? But he's, I, he won on his final I don't. Th- I don't think anybody can have a bad word for Arsene Wenger. Uh, what he's done for, for the game, uh, for the English game, the Premiership, uh, second to, I mean, Alex Ferguson and Arsene being the mainstays of, of British football for a number of years, to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's, uh, I don't know, have Arsenal made the right decision? We will see uh, sooner rather than later. It was very uh, much theirs rather than Arsenal's Yes, decision. exactly. Yeah. It, it weren't as though he, he walked from the job. It was a little, I think there was a little helping hand there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, times change. You know, they've uh, they got the new stadium. It hasn't been the, the last couple of seasons what they would have wanted. No. Uh, but is change always the best thing? We will, we will see shortly. Will. Um, it was fitting that the best referee was in charge of Arsene's final game, um, Michael Oliver. I'm assuming you concur with that. I think Michael is a fantastic referee. Um, whether he's the best or not, time, time will tell. Um, yeah. But he's, he's a fantastic referee, no question. 
Um, I think just with Arsene Wenger, though, if you look at the um, reaction he gets from the opposition fans as well, like he did when it was at Manchester United on the final day at Huddersfield, mm -hmm. they had a round of applause for him after 22 minutes. Yeah. I think that was um, great respect from the opposition fans as well, just yeah. to show you what, um, what a great manager he's been over the yeah. time in, in the Premier right. League. I, I don't care who you support. I mean, we've all supported Arsenal at some stage through some seasons, whether yeah. it be a Champions League or UEFA, whatever, you know, or even in FA Cups and League Cups. You know, because we, I think a lot of people have soft spots for Arsenal. The way they played, the way yeah. you know, the Invincibles of the past, and you know, it, it's, like I say, it's a mark of respect to to a fellow who's put a massive a lot of himself into into football and into Arsenal Football Club. He's changed the image of the club as well, hasn't he? Because there wasn't a great deal of affection for them during the very successful George Graham, George Graham yeah, era, yeah. was there? Uh, there was respect, but yeah, not, yeah. not... In fact, you well, obviously you know about that team, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of team that you played against for Sheffield Wednesday. A great side, but Arsenal coming in and, and like you say, bringing in some quality players. I mean, Thierry Henry, he's... I mean, it just speaks for itself, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, yeah, it gets slightly disappointing end to his career there mm. because of the lack of, of trophy. But what he's done in the game, and like I say, every time, whether it be in defeat, he's pretty much stood up there in front of the camera and answered the questions. Yeah, Services to football, very high indeed. Goes with everybody's best wishes. I'm sure, it, well, he will be staying in football. Be interesting to see where he uh, returns after 1,235 Arsenal games. Uh, I wonder if there's going to be a round of applause in the 1,235th <laughs> minute of a game somewhere. <laughs> We're not going to be around there's to see that. There's not too many managers done over a 1,000 no. games, is there? Per se, across yeah, the board, yeah, there aren't yeah, many. Exactly, yeah, you know, yeah. To do that at one club is absolutely phenomenal. And by the way, we weren't here last week, but uh, so good to hear that Sir Alex Ferguson is on the way to recovery on after that yeah, major yeah. scare. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it really is good. I'm going to return to the Premier League. Um, there's a few other games to talk about, including a 5 4. But let's have a quick look at uh, the playoff games. Um, not a lot of incident in the two championship ones that have taken place so far. Derby won Fulham nil. Roger East was in charge of that one. And uh, Middlesbrough nil. Aston Villa won. Uh, that was Bobby Madley. I suppose uh, no howling debates and raging controversies means yeah. good news for the referee, doesn't it? Yes, always. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't want to be mentioned. Sorry, I've mentioned you for the right reasons. Uh, League One, um, Charlton nil, Shrewsbury won in the first match, Simon Hooper. Now, the second one um, was presided over by Jeremy Simpson and uh, Shrewsbury confirmed the victory, 2-0 on aggregate. They won the second leg, 1-0. But crucially, when that game at Shrewsbury was 0-0, um, Charlton were denied a penalty for a handball shout. Uh, what was your view of that? I, I felt sorry for uh, Jeremy on that one because it was totally on his blind side. Uh, it was because uh, he hit the guy's right hand, right arm, um, and, and it, there was no way he could be expected to see that from where he was. He was in a position where you'd expect him to be on the edge of the penalty area. Um, there's no way I don't think the assistant referee could have helped him. It was such a long way from him. So I think it was unfortunate. But having said that, it's one of those where we could look at it and, and debate it. Mm. So whether it was clear cut, you can argue that. Some people say it's deliberate and board. What do you think? I, I think on, on the balance, yes, it was, because I think he, he brought his arm towards the ball and it was out a little bit. So I would, on balance, yes. Mm. Whether it be overturned again on bringing VAR up, I'm not sure. OK. Um, Lincoln nil, Exeter nil. Ben Toner was in charge of that. Uh, but there were a couple of uh, first half penalty shouts, uh, which Lincoln City claimed, but all square there and no major recriminations from yeah. the managers that I noticed. The one certainly that raised the heckles was the Coventry one, Notts County one, first leg. Gavin Ward was in charge of that. And we've all watched back the incident there where Coventry are awarded a late penalty converted by Mark McNulty. Matt Tootle a judge to have fouled Tom Bayliss. Well, I, as many times as you look at that, you can't see a foul, can you? No, and, and of Prince course, we, the, the, the evidence probably lies from the camera behind the goal, and, and you can see that the guys won the ball. Um, the referee, unfortunately, wasn't in the best of position. He's looking at it from behind, um, and he doesn't really get an angle to, to improve his, his positioning on that. But yeah, I mean, it, was, uh, it wasn't a penalty. No. I, I've looked at it from 
that same angle, you know, behind the goal, and and you can see the referee in the line of the players. Yeah. Uh, so I can probably understand why he's given the decision, having mm. not seen the contact on the ball. So yeah, a little bit of sympathy for the referee there, but when he sees it from the other angle, mm. he yeah. straight away will think I've made a mistake. Could be crucial in that time. Yeah. And, and why would you foul anybody in that position? Because the, the worst, it was going to be a cross, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, they do. It's no, not they judgmentality. Do. <laughs> they do. Yeah. <laughs> it does happen. Why would yeah. you could say that about every why time would you? <laughs> result yeah. in a penalty? Why yeah. would you do that? Though? It wasn't approaching one, was it? <laughs> but on the positive side, um, goal technology, which is being used in all the playoff games, quite rightly, um, ruled out a Coventry claim for a goal in the first half when it would look tight and in some circumstances you could have seen a, a referee giving it. It yeah. mm. looks as if it might have been over the line, but goal tech came to great. the rescue and that was great, that was great to see. Um, rounding up other playoff activity, oh, there was the game that, uh, that I saw, uh, Scunthorpe 2, Rotherham 2, which was a fantastic game actually. Okay. Uh, Tim Robinson was in charge of that, that's all to play for. In the second a late equaliser in that game, wasn't Very it? Very late. Yeah, yeah. Poorly defended by Rotherham, but yeah. credit to Scunthorpe. They'd be a bit disappointed with that. Mm. But yeah. on the bright side for Rotherham, get them back at home uh, and take on the, the rivals again. Yeah. Shrewsbury are already at Wembley, so the winners of that will play Shrewsbury. I mean, what a job done by uh, Paul Hurst. Yeah, right? yeah, fantastic job. Uh, been linked with a number of clubs in recent times. He, yeah. uh, and you can see why, because he's, he's certainly shrews we have had a great season. He'll get linked again. Yeah. Um, he, he, he was a shout for Sheffield Wednesday by some people yeah, yeah. when yeah. Uh, Carlos Cavalier left. Bit too early, uh, probably, in his career. But I'm a big fan of when is it too early. I mean, <laughs> it's same as a young player. You know, when are they old enough? You yeah. know, you, you have to get in there and, and see whether you're good enough to, to start with. All right, let's just round up uh, the rest of the Premier League. We'll come to the National League playoff final in a, in a moment at Wembley, which raised the talking point. Uh, Burnley are in the Europa League. Uh, Burnley won Bournemouth 2. Paul Tierney was in charge of that. Another one with no cards. Uh, no cards whatsoever. Great. That was good news, eh? Great. Uh, and two great English managers here, uh, Sean Dyche and Eddie Howe. Great advert for the game, for our game. Fantastic. Uh, both clubs doing great. I mean, Burnley... Would you put them in, in Europa at the start of the season? Population of 78,000. Sean Dyche, absolutely amazing yeah. job. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, and and <laughs> I like listening to him. I know yeah. he's got that gravel voice, but he speaks some great sense, you know what I mean? He's, uh, he fully understands what that club's about, and the players buy into him. Yeah. That is the main part of it, and he, he, he drives them on. Uh, Manchester United won Watford nil, largely in incidental, except the Manchester United confirmed second place. Lee Mason was in charge of that. We'll come to Lee in a moment. That was his final final game. Yeah, oh, no, it wasn't his final no. game. Sorry, that's a mistake. Write, Lee Mason is him. carrying Don't on. Don't write him off. <laughs> Not quite yet. It was, there it are was, some people who agree. It was Carrick's <laughs> last game. It was Michael Carrick's last that's game. The there are some people who would, you know, without being personal about it, would feels that he's one of the weaker referees and that there should be more replacement of referees. I don't know whether you're in the camp no, or I not. I wouldn't write him off. Um, it's okay for people to say that, but when they actually analyse um, his career and, and his performances, he, ha he has more positive performances than the negative ones. Um, mm. People only people only remember the, the, the odd bad decision here and there. They don't think of the... Um, <laughs> referees never get talked about when they go through a game um, yeah. without any incident, so I wouldn't write yeah. him off. Okay. Lee Mason lives to fight another day. Uh, Man U won Watford nil. Uh, Craig Pawson, Spurs five, Leicester four. This is the kind of game that every referee wants to sign off with, I, I would imagine. And not sign off in his case, yeah, yeah. Well, sign off the <laughs> season. Get rid of all the referees Leicester today. Re retiring that... them all, signing off the season. <laughs> a fantastic game up yeah. and down. Like you He's say, a young referee anyway. Yeah, you, like we say, Harry Kane knocking him in, Vardy knocking him in. Uh, bodes well for the summer for England. Uh, but yeah, I mean... What was the card count in that? The card count in that actually was three. Uh, I'm, actually, I've, I've been an animal so, yeah, over just, the weekend. I was just testing you there. Spurs <laughs> won, <laughs> Spurs won card, and two for Leicester. Yeah. They didn't have time to issue to yellow cards. Fair, in, two, in a, two busy points into the <laughs> centre circle. In a five-four game, you would have expected a few more cards than that. Yeah, I would have expected more cards because yeah. the game's a bit more cut and thrust. Yeah. Uh, where the incidents do come up. Uh, a nil-nil game, you would expect probably 
no no uh, cards. For a game with man. goals, you know, there's tackles flying in, trying to stop people, trying to win mm, the game. Yeah. We're chasing it again. Then you'd have thought a few shirts ripped off and yellow cards for that <laughs> as well, wouldn't you? Which yeah. is the most silly yellow card in oh. the game. I mean, it's a silly law, but so it's... To be fair, if I did it, it now, it'd be a red players. card, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly would. We wouldn't want to see you again, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Spurs finished third. Uh, well done to them. Graham Scott was in charge of the game between David Moyes' present club. Well, for now, we all think he's leaving West Ham. West Ham 3, Everton 1. And there was only one yellow card in that, by the way, if you're, uh, if you're remotely interested. We'll come to those retiring referees in a moment, not, in, not including Lee Mason, I hasten to add. Uh, after, uh, congratulations to Tranmere Rovers, who are finally back in the Football League. National League playoff final at Wembley. Tranmere 2, Boreham Wood 1. Liam Ridehall of uh, Tranmere uh, sent off after 48 seconds there. Tranmere still going on to win. Uh, that, I mean, there's got to be a, a switched on referee there. I'm looking at it, two footed on Ricky Shakes, no doubt at all. But even so, uh, a big call very early for Neil Hare, the referee. I think that's a really brave referee under any circumstances um, to, to send someone off in the first minute for a tackle. I think that's extremely brave of the referee. Um, so well done, well done to him because he was correct. Yeah, I mean, back in the day when I played, they always said your first one's free. Yeah. Not when it's as reckless as that one, mm. uh, and, and a fantastic decision. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Reckless challenge, referee spot on it, uh, made the right decision, uh, and, and fair play to him, to be yeah. fair. Let's come to our farewells, uh, finally. Uh, not just those two referees. Who else got? Have you got something time? to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> John Moss. No, not him either. John Moss was refereeing Crystal Palace two West Brom nil. Two of uh, Roy Hodgson's clubs meeting. His current one against his uh, former one. Great finish of the season for Palace. But and I don't think there was anything really to debate uh, anything contentious in this. So we really ought to give the stage to John Motson. It was his last game commentating for Match of the Day. I'm sure that you've got many memories of John I, as well, oh, Motsy as we all have. I mean, it's uh, it, it's a sad time for football because it, it, it takes me back to the, when Murray Walker finished at the Grand Prix. You know, the motor racing, you know, the, the voice of motor racing, racing uh, okay. motto, uh, the Motsy, voice yeah. of football. He yeah, commentated doubt. on a few of your goals over the years, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I've probably heard his, uh, his tones uh, screaming my goals in, yeah. Uh, what's it, I think, what is it? Uh, ten World Cups, ten Euro Championships. Uh, just, I mean, just goes on and on. I mean, he's, yeah. he's been and seen and done it at the, at the top for 50 years. Any personal memories of Motti? Iconic character. He's never been a referee basher. He's always been very supportive. Yeah. I've seen him at a few referees functions over the years. And uh, yeah, he'll be, he'll be missed, sorely missed. Yeah, such an iconic, distinctive voice and the kind of person that I have the pleasure of and privilege of knowing him and meeting him yeah. quite a few times. And you know, when you get a, a voice mail message from somebody and you usually <laughs> delete it, particularly if it's yeah, you, yeah. just delete that, delete that. Yeah. I've kept one of his yeah. on my phone yeah. for posterity, uh -huh. you know, because of that, that, that great voice. So, uh, there we are, Neil Swarbrick and Mike Jones, finally, uh, two Premier, Leagues, uh, Premier League referees uh, retiring. Now, OK, um, we try and be balanced on this show. Mike Jones, in particular, has had a fair amount of criticism at times. Uh, it's never been personal, and whatever is said, to become a Premier League, to referee in the Premier League in the first place, never mind how many games, is an outstanding achievement. It is. For, for those two guys to, to reach that level in the first place, it is a fantastic achievement for everything you have to go through to get there. And then to stay as long as they have, again, it's another amazing achievement. And, and, I, and I think fair play to both of those guys. They've both had great careers and, and they, they deserve all the plaudits they get. Yeah. And uh, they may act as uh, VARs possibly. I yeah, they, they, I'm sure they will. I mean, it's another extension now to uh, a retired referee's career. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. They'll stay in the game that way. And, and it's interesting, you know, in America, um, when we introduce the VARs, there's, you actually get some guys who are very, very good VARs who are aren't perhaps not the best referees. So sometimes not the best referees make the best VARs. That's it's an interesting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a bit, yeah. it's a bit strange. Yeah. But anyway, congratulations to both Neil Swarbrick and to Mike Jones yeah, on, well done. on great careers. Yeah. Um, and that's it for our season. 
on The Ref Online, as it is now. Thank you for your company. It's been uh, great to see you there. It's been wonderful here and entertaining uh, with the boys. And The Ref Online and The Ref Show back for another season in what will be 2018-19. See you then. Take care.